Have I ever told you about the, um, the church I served? It was um, a building that was 200 years old. It had a um, Paul Revere bell up in the belfry. And um, those of us who attended the church during the summer got rather warm. This church was not air conditioned. So we decided to uh, put in some ceiling fans. And of course it came to a vote. And uh, during the church meeting, there was this man who got up and made this passionate speech against the ceiling fans. He said, um, you know, you do not want to desecrate this sacred holy place by putting ceiling fans in. There's only two places where ceiling fans can be found, and that's bars and brothels. And there was a little woman in the back that stood up and she said, well, how would you know? <laughs> we took the vote. We got the fans. <laughs> all right. It's good to see all of you this morning. Are, are you ready to hear the word? Yes. Okay. Uh, Luke chapter 18. We're going to be talking this morning about the nagging widow of Luke 18, the first eight verses. Here we go. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared for what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Let us pray. O oh God, grant us the gift of illumination and the grace of understanding. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Well, once there was a woman who just would not give up. It was a widow who was desperate for justice against her oppressor. And day after day, she appealed to a judge, a judge who neither feared God nor respected people. And he kept refusing to help this woman, but she persisted tirelessly bothering him until he, frankly, just got sick of her presence. And he said, I'm going to grant her justice so that she won't wear me out. Now, in the Greek, in the Greek, uh, this literally means I'm going to give her what she wants so that she won't give me a black eye. So that she won't beat me black and blue. So, you know, at the outset of this story, this parable, Luke tells us that, uh, that this is a parable about the need to pray always and not lose heart, not give up. But now this is troubling. 
uh, are we really supposed to harass God until we wear God down? Is that what prayer is? Is it bothering a hard-hearted God until God caves? Is that what it is? When I receive an answer to my prayer, is it because God is sick to death of hearing my voice and wants me to shut up? Well, thankfully, the reading itself anticipates these kinds of questions in case we're inclined to think of God as the unjust judge. Jesus explains that the parable works by way of contrast. Jesus said, unlike the hard-hearted judge, God will quickly grant justice to those who cry out to him. But now this raises some, this explanation raises some troubling questions. I mean, we know this from our lived experiences that too often God does delay in our, with our most fervent prayers. God oftentimes delays in, in answering our prayers for healing, for deliverance, for justice, our protection, our peace. Our prayers go unanswered. Too often, our struggles with prayer lead us to experience God as very much like the judge in the story, turned away from the urgency of our request for reasons that we just can't fathom. So what are we to make of this parable? Well, for starters, I'm wondering if this story is less about God and more about us. I wonder if it's about the state of our hearts, about the motivations behind our prayers. Maybe what is at stake here is not who God is and how God operates in our world, but who we are and why we need so desperately to be people of persistent praying. So this morning, I would like for you to come along for a ride. I, I want to present to you a couple of possibilities. Um, I want to look at this story from a couple of different angles. First of all, what can we learn from this story if we put ourselves in the place of this widow? We're told to pray always and to not lose heart. Well, what does this mean? What does it look like? to lose heart in our spiritual lives. Well, the words that come to my mind are weariness, uh, resignation, numbness, even despair. When I lose heart, I lose my sense of focus and direction. When I lose heart, I lose clarity and begin to doubt God's intentions. I get irritable and cynical and my spiritual GPS just goes haywire and all roads lead to nowhere. 
Do you know what I mean? Are you with me? In contrast, this widow is, is the very picture of purposefulness, precision, aliveness, clarity. She knows her need. She knows its urgency. And she knows exactly where to go and to who and whom to ask in order that she might get what she needs. If anything, the daily business of getting up, getting dressed, heading over to the judge's house or to his workplace, banging on his door and talking his ear off until he listens testifies to her own sense of who she is and what she's about. Like many widows in the Bible, I think of uh, the one from Zarephath who fed Elijah, or I think of Anna the prophetess awaiting for the Messiah, or that generous widow uh, whose might, whose penny Jesus noticed and commended. There's nothing vague or washed out about this bold, plucky woman who drives this apathetic judge nuts by her demands. She, she lives in technicolor here and now. Give me justice. I will not shut up until you do. What happens when we pray like this widow? What is prayer for? I know from experience, I know from experience that when I persist in prayer, I mean really persist with full heart over an extended period of time, something happens to me. When I pray like that, something happens to me. My sense of who I am, to whom I belong, what really matters in this life and why, these things mature and solidify. My heart grows stronger. It becomes less fragile or less flighty. And once in a while, it even soars. I like those times. And sometimes, listen, sometimes, here's the biggest surprise of all. These good and substantive things that happen, even when I don't receive what I pray for, even when I don't receive the answer I'm praying for, something happens to me. I don't mean for a moment to suggest that unanswered prayer doesn't take a toll. It does. It hurts. It baffles. And sometimes it breaks my heart. But maybe that's the point of this parable. That prayer, the work of prayer, is hard. The widow's predicament is, is not straightforward. She has to make a costly choice 
every single day. Will I keep asking? Dare I risk humiliation another day? Do I still believe that my request is worthy of articulation? Can I be patient? Am I still capable of trusting in the possibility of justice? In the final analysis, prayer is a great mystery. We can't know, it's, it's not given to us to know why some prayers get quickly answered while others are not. We can't understand why our earnest pleas for justice, for healing, for peace, or whatever, hit the wall of God's silence and sometimes remain there for weeks or months or years or lifetimes. And yet, from the heart of this bewildering mystery, Jesus asked the question, will I find faith on the earth? Will I find human beings like this bothering, nagging woman? Will I find such ferocity, such tenacity, such fortitude? Will I find that kind of faith on earth? You know what? The widow's only power was the power of showing up every day. Showing up. The power of sheer grit. This power is not to be taken lightly. Prayer is not to be taken lightly. We can't always know what gets shaken, what gets transformed or upended or vindicated simply because we show up again and again in prayer. That's my first point. But I have another. I want us to look at this from a different angle. You may think it's a stretch. I'm still going to tell you about it. It sp speaks to me of, um, to, to where I often find myself in uh, relationship with God. What if I'm not the widow? What if I am the unjust judge? And God is the pleading, persistent one in the widow. Let's look at it from that angle. The widow, the persistent, pleading God, knocking persistently at the door in hopes that I will soften my heart and attend to the pain and the injustice and the sorrow wounding God's very being. Jesus said this judge neither feared God nor respected people. Can I honestly say that I never fit that description? Can I honestly say that I have not been indifferent? That I have not been irritable and closed off and unsympathetic? Is it really the case 
that my heart is always open to the pain and the brokenness of others? Don't I self-protect? Don't I police my borders quite compulsively? Don't I say, oh, it's not my problem. Somebody else have to take care of that. Yeah. Yeah. Scripture attests to the fact that God hears the cries of the helpless and that God is in the cries of the helpless. God dwells with the unseen. God dwells with the unheard, the unloved, the unwanted. God is the wronged widow crying out for justice, pleading with me to soften, to listen, to care, to keep my heart open. The truth of the matter is that judge lives in me. And prayer alone, listen to this, prayer alone will tear down my inner judge. It's the persistent prayer that will soften my heart. It's the prayer that every obstacle I place before God, my fear, my shame, my woundedness, my inattention will be dismantled. It will be in persistent prayer. In this sense, prayer is the first and, 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 and foremost thing for me, for you. Prayer is the fist that breaks down the door of my own stubbornness, of my own bitterness, of my own unforgiveness, of my own sinful resistance. Prayer is what enables the light of God's compassion to illuminate the darkness, the darkest and the most oppressed corners of human life with hope and compassion. I tell you what, God delights in those who strive, who contend, who wrestle like Jacob of old, who wrestled with the angel and said, I'm not going to let you go until I'm blessed. God delights in that. Wrestling with God is not a bad thing. Wrestling with God is not a scary thing because it is the opposite of apathy. It is the opposite of resignation of giving up. It's the opposite even of loneliness. To fight with God, to wrestle with God, to show up every day, day after day, to wrestle with our resistance in the darkest hours of the night is to stay close, is to, to keep our arms wrapped tightly around the one who alone can bless us. Wrestling means we haven't walked away. Wrestling means we've still got skin in the game. 
Oh, dear friends, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Faith that persists, faith that contends, faith that wrestles. This is the question that matters most. Will he find that kind of faith in you and in me? Well... Amen.